In this video, we're going to take a look at differentiating the reciprocal trig functions. So to begin with here, let's just recap the reciprocal trig functions. So we have y equals cosec x, y equals cosec x. We now have y equals sec x. And then finally, we have y equals cot x. Okay. Now, if you can't remember, each one of these is a reciprocal of the original trig functions. And the way to remember it is to look at the third layer. The S here tells us this is the reciprocal of sine x, that's 1 over sine x. The third layer here is C, so that's the reciprocal of cos x, so 1 over cos x. And again, the third layer here is T, so that tells us that's the reciprocal of cot x, so 1 over cot x there. Okay, now I can differentiate each one of these. So for the first one here, if I differentiate y equals cosec x with respect to x, I get dy by dx. And if I dy by dx here, what I get in this case is minus cosec x multiplied by cot x. So minus cosec x cot x. Okay, that's our first result there. When I differentiate sec x here, we get dy by dx. When I differentiate sec x here, what I get in this case is sec x multiplied by tan x. And then finally, when I differentiate y equals cot x here with respect to x, again, we get dy by dx. And in this case, differentiating y equals cot x with respect to x, what I get here is minus cosec squared x. So minus cosec squared x there. Okay, so those are the three results that we need. What we're gonna do now is basically use everything we've covered so far, such as the chain rule, uh, product rule, quotient rule, and show how we can differentiate each one of these now um, to obtain these results. Okay, so let's begin um, showing how we obtain the derivative here of y equals cosec x. So what I want to do here to begin with is show that y equals cosec x. So let's just write this down. y equals cosec x. If I differentiate this here, then I get dy by dx is equal. In that case, dy by dx is equal to minus cosec x cot x. Minus cosec x cot x. So how do we go from y equals cosec x to the derivative here being minus cosec x cot x? Well, the way we do this is using the fact that this is a reciprocal trig function. So like we said, this is 1 over sine x. So this is 1 over sine x. So from here now, what I can do is use the quotient rule. Okay, in that case, u here will be my numerator, which is simply 1. And v here will be my denominator, which is sine x in this case. So we get sine x there. Now, obviously, if we're using the quotient rule here, we also need u prime. So if I differentiate 1 here with respect to x, then obviously that's just a constant. When you differentiate a constant, you get 0. So that's equal to 0. And if I differentiate v here, I get v prime. So differentiating sine x with respect to x, and that would give me cos x. Okay. So that's everything we need to get started here. So obviously, if we want to show the derivative is equal to this, and we're using the quotient rule, then we need the formula for the quotient rule here, dy by dx. So using the uv notation that I've mentioned in the video for the quotient rule, then what I'm going to get here is v u prime. So v multiplied by u prime, we know minus u v prime, and this is all divided by v squared. And do remember when using the quotient rule that the order within the numerator is important. Okay. So using my u, v, u prime, and v prime here, then we've got v multiplied by u prime. So that's zero multiplied by sine x. So zero times sine x, which obviously it will be zero, but we'll write it down here just for clarity. We then minus u, v prime. So u here is one multiplied by v prime which is cosine x, so minus 
1 times cos x. And this is all divided here by v squared. So v is sine x. Then we divide this here by sine squared x. Okay, let's just simplify the numerator here. Well, this part here will be 0. So 0 times sine x obviously is just 0. We've then got minus 1 times cos x. So that's going to be minus cos x. And that's all divided by sine squared x. So that's all over sine squared x. Now from here we need to do a bit of work to get this into the correct form. What we're looking for here is minus cosec x multiplied by cot x. So what I can do here is write this now as a product. This is the same as minus cos x over sine x times by 1 over sine x. Okay, if you multiply those together, you would get the original here of minus cos x over sine squared x. So like we said, we can write that now as minus cos x over sine x and times that here by 1 over sine x. Okay, and like I said, just double check that if you multiply these together and you get this original fraction here. So in this case, now we just need to use our identities here, um, or not our identities, but the definitions here. So 1 over sine x, we know that that is cosec x here. That would be cosec x. And then minus cos x over sine x, well, remember here, that sine x over cos x is tan x. If I have the reciprocal here of this um, trig identity, so that would be cos x over sine x, that would be 1 over tan x, which we know is cot x. Okay? So in that case then, what I'm going to get here is minus cot x multiplied by um, cosec x here. And this looks slightly different to what we wanted to show here. We wanted minus cosec x multiplied by cot x. But remember, for multiplication, the order of the multiplication doesn't matter. So I can just change that around to give me minus cosec x multiplied by cot x there. Okay. So just to make it clear, um, I just kind of color code this here. It's 1 over sine x. That corresponds to this cosec x here. That's this part here. Just highlight that. And then the minus cos x over sine x, that corresponds to my cot x. So again, let's highlight that here, just so you can see how we've made that jump. There we go. Okay, oops, highlight the wrong part, of course. Minus cot x is cot x. Um, or if you take the minus out, of course, it'll be the same. But this part here, that corresponds to my cot x there. Okay, and like we said, it doesn't matter where the minus goes here. Um, in terms of the order, like we said, these are equivalent. Okay, but there we have it. So we've shown that dy by dx there um, is minus cosec x cot x. So like you might be imagining now, these are all going to follow a pretty similar um, pattern. So what we're going to do now is show how we can differentiate y equals sec x. So now let's show that if we have y equals sec x here, y equals sec x, if we differentiate this here, and we get dy by dx. And the result that we want to show here is sec x multiplied by tan x. Okay. So again, the way we show this derivative here is going to follow, like we said, in a pretty similar fashion or pattern to the previous example. So what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do here is use the fact that we can write this as a reciprocal trig function. This is 1 over cos x. Okay. So again, we're going to use the quotient rule here, where u will be my numerator, which is 1. And v here will be my denominator, which is cosine x, so cos x there. So again, we also need u prime and v prime. So u prime again will just be 0. And v prime here, so we're going to differentiate cosine x with respect to x. In that case, then, we get minus sine x here. So minus sine x. So again, we need to use the quotient rule here. So let's just recap the formula. dy by dx using the quotient rule. This is v u prime minus u v prime. That's all over v squared there. Okay, so v u prime minus u v prime all over v squared. So 
if we substitute into this um, formula here appropriately, in that case then, VU prime, so that's cosine x multiplied by zero, which obviously it will be zero, but again, we're just gonna write this down here just so we've got it in full. So minus U V prime, so U is one, multiply that by minus sine x. So we need to be slightly careful here as well, because we've got minus, this minus here, I mean minus, minus sine x, times one. Okay, so times by one. And then we divide this here by v squared. So v is equal to cosine x. It's gonna be cosine squared x there. Okay. So again, what we need to do here now is simplify the numerator. Or well, zero times cos x is zero. Minus sine x times one is minus sine x. So if we minus minus sine x, we get positive sine x there. So what I've got here is sine x over cos squared x. And again, what I need to do here from this point here now, which is a bit of work to get it into this form here. So we're nearly done at this point now. So again, I'm gonna split this up now and write this as a product. I can write this as sine x over cos x multiplied um, or times that with one over cos x there. Okay, so sine x over cos x, multiply that with one over cos x, okay? And notice if you multiply these together, we get this original fraction here. So in this case then, sine x over cos x, hopefully you recognize that that is tan x. So that's gonna be tan x. And one over cos x, we know that is sec x, okay? So I get tan x multiplied by sec x there. Now the question says, or the idea here is to show that that's sec x tan x. Obviously the order again doesn't matter. I can just write that as sec x tan x there. Okay, that's absolutely fine. But either way, that's just what we're looking for there. Okay, so there we have it. So that's the derivative then of y equals sec x. So finally, all we want to do now is show how we um, differentiate here y equals cot x. And finally then we have y equals cot x here. What I want to show here that if we differentiate this, we get dy by dx. So dy by dx. We want to show that we can express this here as minus cos x squared x. Minus cos x squared x there. Now again, we need to define this here as the reciprocal trig function. So the third letter here tells us what that function is, and that will be tan x. So it's going to be one over tan x here. Okay. So again, now that we have this fraction here, we can just simply use the quotient rule. So u will be my numerator, which is one. V will be my denominator, which is tan x. So again, we need u prime and v prime. So u prime, again, getting pretty repetitive, but that will be zero. And v prime here, so if we differentiate tan x with respect to x, what would that give us? Well, you should recognize that that would give us sec squared x. So we get sec squared x there, okay? So we've got everything we need here. We can now apply the quotient rule here. So like always, let's just remind ourselves of the formula here. So dy by dx, that's gonna be v u prime. We know minus u v prime, so u v prime. And then finally, we divide this here by v squared, okay? So, What's v? Well, v is tan x. We multiply that with u prime, which is zero. So zero multiplied by tan x. We know minus u v prime, so u is one. Multiply that with sec squared x here. So minus one times sec squared x. And then finally, we divide this by v squared. So v is tan x, so that's gonna be tan squared x. Okay. Again, like you, can see, like you can see what we did for the previous two examples, we just need to simplify the numerator here. Well, zero times tan x, that's gonna be zero. Minus one times sec squared x, that'll give me minus sec squared x. I get minus sec squared x, that's all over tan squared x. Okay. So we need to do a bit of work on this here. Um, what I noticed straight away is we have a square in both the numerator and the denominator here. 
So what I can do then is write this here. Again, I'm going to factor this minus out in front as well of the fraction. That's going to be minus sec x over tan x all squared. Okay, so we've got a square in the numerator and the denominator. And I can factor that square out. Oh, sorry, not factor the square out. But I can write that as the fraction squared. Okay, so that's the correct way of expressing that. So that's my fraction sec x over tan x all squared. Okay, the reason I'm doing that is because I think it makes it a little bit easier to manipulate here. So we know that tan x is sine x over cos x, sec x is 1 over cos x. So what I can do here is write that then. That's going to be minus, so it's now going to be 1 over cos x. So 1 over cos x all over sine x over cos x. Okay, and this is all squared, remember? Now, when you have a fraction here divided by another fraction, if the denominator of both of these fractions is the same, they do just cancel. Now, if you're not sure why that works, obviously you can just perform the multiplication here. Um, obviously, you need to take the reciprocal of the second fraction. But it's one of these things that will save you time, especially in an exam. Okay, so I can cancel cos x there with that cos x. So what I get left with here then is minus 1 over sine x, 1 over sine x, and that's all squared. So in that case then, 1 over sine x squared, that would be 1 over sine squared x, and then we need to multiply that with this minus 1 here on the outside. I'm going to get minus 1 over sine squared x. And remember, 1 over sine x is cosec x. So if I've got minus 1 over sine squared x, that's going to be minus cosec squared x. Okay, and notice that's exactly what we needed to show here. Okay, so there we go. Proof complete. Um, and there we have it. So that's our derivative for y equals cot x. So that brings us to the end of this video on differentiating the reciprocal trig functions. In the next video, we're going to take a look at parametric differentiation.